This video will help you understand node entry. We're just going to do this from the simple node entry tool here. And it does give you a palette of note values, which you could click on and go put notes in and come back. And that would take forever. So I'm a big believer in learning key commands. So the key command for note durations is right here on the numeric keypad. Now, in the previous video, I showed you how you can customize it if you're using a laptop and you don't have a number pad. So if you are using that, you might want to go back and review that, that uh, particular function. So let's go back here and uh, select some note values. Number one gives you a 64th note. Two is a 32nd, three is 16th, and let's just keep going. Four, five, six, seven, and eight is a double whole note. Let's drop back here to number four. This is an eighth note. And I'm just going to type in the letters G, A, and B. And that'll give me those three notes. And then you can change to a new note duration. I'll hit number five. We'll put in this C. And we, I want to put a dot on that so you can use the dot, either the, the period key next to the comma key or the dot here on the numeric keypad, and that just adds a dot in there, okay? Pretty easy. Now let's go back to eighth note. Now, if you do have a MIDI keyboard, you don't have to type in the keys. You can just simply play them on your MIDI keyboard. Now, let's just hit the right arrow key. I'm going to go to the next measure here. That automatically fills the previous measure with rest. Of course, if you want to put in a rest, you just select the note value for the rest and then just hit zero for zero note, I guess, is how you'd think of that. Now let's put in another note here and I want to tie this to the next note. So let's just hit T for tie. Fairly intuitive there. And we'll hit another note value and put in another C. There we go. Now let's go back to eighth notes here. Put in some more. Okay. Now, if you try to put in a note that's too big for the measure, let's put in a quarter note again, you'll notice that it will automatically tie the note into the next measure. Okay, now I want to put in, I'm going to go back to a D here, I want to put in an eighth note, D, but that's not the eighth note D I wanted. I wanted it to be an octave lower. So it's going to go to the nearest D. So I want that to be an octave lower. So let's undo that. Undo it. You use Control Z on Windows. That's Command Z on Mac. Pretty universal for undo, and it has unlimited undo. And then let's drop that cursor down by an octave before we type in the note. So to do this, we hold down Shift and hit our down arrow key. So I think of it as shifting down an octave. There we go. If you kind of think of some terminology that will help you remember the keys, you don't have to just memorize keystrokes. Just think of what you're doing. I'm shifting down an octave. Okay. Now let's type in a D. There we go. I've got that in there. And let's type this. And now I want another F, but I want that F to be an octave higher. Well, instead of taking it out and putting it back in again, let's just uh, do the same thing except add one more key. A very important key in note entry is called the Alt key, known as the Option key on Macintosh. The Alt key allows you to alter things. And again, on Macintosh, Option. So let's hold down Alt, and we'll do the same thing. Alt, Shift, and this time up an octave, and it'll alter the last entry by shifting it up an octave. There we go. Let's hit uh, another note here. This is going to be the beginning of a triplet. So I'm just going to type in our triplet note value. This is the last note value we have in the numbers. That's number nine. So let's just hit number nine. That'll give you a triplet. Now you can just go ahead and put in the other two notes. Okay. And now let's put in a note that I want to put an accidental on. I want to make that a C sharp. So you just hit your plus key for sharps, and you can just keep hitting it, and it'll go up a half step each time. And your minus key for flats it just brings it down by a half step each time. So let's go back up here to C sharp. There we go. 
And let's put in another note here. And we'll make that a B flat. There we go. Now, if you're typing in notes and you need to add another note, an interval above or below a, a current note, you can do that using your number row. For example, just hit the number three, we'll add a third above the current note. Or you could add one below by using shift and the proper interval key, like the number six. We'll add a sixth below. Now I know if you're on the laptop map, you can't use the number row, that's your duration keys. So simply use the function keys above the number keys, like F3 would add the third and F6 would have added the sixth below, okay? If you're on Macintosh, you just have to be careful that in your system settings, you actually have the function key set as regular F1 through F10 function keys. Okay. Let's just undo that. There we go. We'll end right here. We'll pick up some more note entry tips in the next video.